try try if you can not to do that too much. Um, the second big lesson, although there is voiceover in Candy still a little. Right. The second big lesson was basically yeah, how right. amazing actors are, and I have a. It's an ongoing lesson, really. I overwrite out of anxiety. There's all these people along the path who are reading a screenplay, and the anxiety is that you believe in your gut how it should play out if it's a beautiful film that succeeds. Yes, him. Um, but on the other hand, there's a whole lot of people who are going to be reading this script, including financiers, who want to know things a bit more clearly. And Heath Ledger came up to me and Neil one day and said, he's holding the script like this. He's like, you guys have written some pretty good things here, you know? And Neil goes, mm hmm And he said, but uh, you do know a lot of it's going to end up on the cutting room floor, don't you? And Neil says, uh, yes, yes, well, nonetheless, I'd like you to read these lines, please. <laughs> and then, so as an example, the final scene, the final scene of the film, I put my heart and soul into it. It's like three pages of really dense dialogue between uh, the, he, his name's Dan, the character, between the Heath Ledger character and the Abby Cornish character. And the final scene as it appears in the film is extremely minimalist. There's, there's like four lines of dialogue in the whole thing and it's magnificent, yeah. So it wasn't even on the cutting room floor so much as it seems like there was actually a reduction when it was being shot as well. Oh no, they, it was on the cutting room floor. Okay, it was entirely, all right. Yeah, they all delivered right. the lines. All right, all right. Good, good to know. Um, how did you first become involved in this project, the adaptation of A Long Way Home by Saru Friar? Well, one of the producers of Candy um, a guy called Emil Sherman, he met this young guy, Ian Canning, who was like a, the representative of the European distributors, who was basically an exec producer on Candy, on the Candy shoot. And they became friends and they went on to form a company, Seesaw Films. And they struggled through a few things and then one day they made the King's Speech and their lives changed forever. And we, we had just, we all liked each other and we had worked on a few other things, some of which came to fruition and some didn't. And they came, so then they came to me with Saru's book, A Long Way Home, and said, have a look at this book and tell us what you would do if you were going to adapt it. And when you, and when you did, did you see a film in it as you were reading it, or did you see it Insta as... Instantly. Okay. Like, uh, instantly my heart leapt through my chest. It was, um, I saw it as being very pure and very simple and very mythic. Well, it wasn't without its complications, just at, at, a, at some very basic level, the the myth of reunification with the lost mother, which is, it's just something that touches us all deep inside and, and I knew that this could be an amazing movie from the start. I think what really grabs people about this is that there's such a great first act, really just with Saru and Gudu, and they're, they're kind of going about and it's almost like a short film in a sense. And then the minute that Saru ends up stranded on the train alone, the audience is pulled with him away from